That's why verse 4 is a warning to us. Again, he says, And you fathers provoke not your children to wrath. You can. You're not supposed to. But you can create that in your, in your child. Provoke not your children unto wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So, it's the parents who need to implement God's plan for child rearing, for, for child growth. So today's message is God's ABC of child rearing. Number one, A, out of ABC, said a couple weeks ago, it was accept the responsibility. Verse 4 again says, bring them up. That's a responsibility. You as parents, I as a parent have to accept our responsibility as parents. We've got young parents right over here. Back here behind the hundreds of folks in front of them. Here we got, we got a young family here and little Will. They have to accept that responsibility to see little Will grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Just like we have to accept our responsibility. Right, brother? That's, that's our responsibility. When we have children, we, we, we get that responsibility. Accept the responsibility. Letter A. I already preached about that. If you need to check that out, go back over on LBC video on YouTube and you'll find it somewhere. I think. Is that right, brother? Okay. Accept the responsibility to bring them up, providing for their physical needs, their emotional needs, and their spiritual needs. That's our responsibility. Not just the physical, but the emotional. Not just the emotional, but the spiritual. I don't want my kid to get his spiritual needs met on the street corner. Does that make sense? I know it's you know, it's got a little play on words, but I want him to get his spiritual needs met here, in God's house and in my home. That's my responsibility. My children. I'll go on. Number two, letter B. We won't keep it too long this morning. Letter B. How about this? Be available. Parents, we need to be. Available. Did you notice that verse 4 implies that parents ought to be there to bring up their own children? Again, ye fathers, provoke not your children wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. There's an implication there that you need to be there for your children. You have to be there for your children. Be available. If you're going to have a child, you've got to be available to give that child the nurturing that's required. And I want you to note this. I want you to know that this applies not only to parents who don't live with their children right now because of divorce or something else. It also applies to parents who do live with their kids. I've seen in families today, mothers and fathers, who view parenting as secondary. To other things like career, leisure, and pleasure. Hey, I worked all day. I don't have time for those kids. Oh, you might have a mother and dad in, in, in the home, uh, mom and dad's in home, but you know, I've worked on it. I'm tired. I don't got time. Let's, put a, let's just put them in front of the television or turn that video game on. Just let them go. Because I, you know, I've worked hard all day. And you know what? Here comes the weekend. <laughs> Here comes the weekend. I've got to watch the Husker game. I've got to watch them get whipped by Oklahoma. Dear Lord, what a spanking that was. <laughs> I just heard about it, and it sounded bad. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to send our kids somewhere else, because I deserve a break today. This isn't Burger King. You're a parent. <laughs> I deserve a break today. No, you deserve, you deserve your responsibility and be available for your children. You see, because what's happened in our country today, parents who aren't available for their children, somebody else is being available for them. How do you think gangs get started? I'm not here to psychoanalyze the, the inner workings of gang membership and all that stuff. I'm telling you, how do you think they get started? Where's dad at? Where's mom at? Why do people get involved? Why do kids get involved with drugs? Experiment with those things. And fornication. And on and on and on. Parents, we need to be available for our children. Listen, we can't view parenting as secondary. Here's an interesting statistic. I'm on stats this morning in polls because of the election. So bear with me. 
Interesting statistic. In 1960, there were 141,000 families or 141,000 children who enrolled in daycare in America in 1960. In 1992, that number jumped up to 2.5 million children enrolled in daycare. Now, I understand perhaps it's beyond the parents' control and they have to do it financial, for, for financial responsibility. Financial reasons is like the number one cause. And I understand that. And I'm not condemning you for that, but, but listen to this. Let me ask you this. When you do that, oh, you're going to say, preacher, you're meddling. Why don't you just get back to preaching? <laughs> Stop meddling in my business. But again, if you don't hear it from the pulpit, where are you going to hear it? I've got to work two jobs, three jobs. My question is why? Well, I got all these bills. My question is how'd you get all those bills? Well, I thought I needed this, this, and this. Okay, you're there already. You can't do anything about it. Or you can't, I mean, you can't go back and change time. So, little Johnny and little Jimmy and little Jane go into daycare. My plan is I'm going to work to pay those bills off. Because that's what people do because they got bills to pay. We got bills to pay, right? But what happens in the translation? We never get them paid off. Or we do, we make more bills. And we get accustomed to that lifestyle that we're now living. And we keep on buying more and creating more bills and creating more opportunity for us to keep out and going out and work and work and work. And we forget about Jimmy, Johnny, and Jane. I'm not condemning anyone, trust me. Believe me, know my heart. <laughs> but I need to tell you, that we cannot put parenting secondary to career, to leisure, or pleasure. My son's 16. And my daughter's 12. One day, Lord willing, they're going to move out. <laughs> I mean, because I want to see him thrive for Christ, not because I want his room for my personal office or anything. <laughs> Well, actually, it's not me. It's my daughter. You see, she wants, once Brian moves out, she wants to knock down the wall. She wants me to. She's not going to do anything. She goes, Daddy, knock down that wall, and I can have like this whole big room. I'm like, hmm, that's a thought. <laughs> but one day, consequently, unfortunately, they're going to move away, or at least out of our home. And we're going to miss them. But it's our responsibility to be available to train them so that when they do get out, they can thrive for Christ. They can live for the Lord. They can be productive members in society. Because <laughs> well, after Tuesday, everyone's going to have to be productive. <laughs> <laughs> Only God knows how productive we're going to have to be. But I don't care who gets in. It's where we're going. But in spite of all that, in spite of all that, we have to I'm going to miss them, but we're, we're going to have to. They're going to have to leave sooner or later. But these, this is the pivotal time when we must be available for them. And then later on, when they're outside the house, we can still be available for them. We can still help them and counsel them. And if they don't take your counsel, mom or dad, don't be upset. Don't be alarmed because guess what? They're adults. They're on their own. And if they're married, the Bible says they've left mother and father and cleaved unto their own uh, their own uh, spouse, their own uh, their wife and, and their husband. So, parents, let's be available for our kids now. I think the Bible tells us in verse 4 that we're to nurture to train, and to train our own children. Now listen, as I, as I finish up on this point, there's a difference between training a child and telling a child. Real quickly, I'll give you that here. There's a difference. Um, I know some parents who smoke. I know some parents who uh, smoke in front of their kids. You may say that's not a big deal, but it was a big deal when I was growing up. My mother, it was hilarious. She, we had this mercury brome. You remember the LTT, LTD bromes? They were like 60 feet long. <laughs> Mine was a lime green. Avocado. Everything in the 70s was avocado. <laughs> the car was avocado. And my mother would just, she was a chain smoker, and, and we hated it. We were in the back like this. Oh, Mom, can you, put, can you at least let us put a window down? Oh, it's not a problem. <laughs> it was to me. I, had, I couldn't breathe. 